In response to increasing flood risk and detailed consultation with stakeholders on flooding concerns, since the summer of 2016, the Coastal Flood Adaptation Strategy, or CFAS, project team has developed a number of coastal flood adaptation options to increase resilience of Surrey's coastal communities. The options have been developed and shortlisted through a participatory process involving community members and stakeholders including local experts from universities, government, and environmental organizations, as well as multidisciplinary staff and engineers from City of Surrey and consultancies. It has also involved review and input from Dutch experts with world-leading experience in coastal flood management. The CFAS project team studied three low-lying coastal areas in Surrey, Mud Bay, Crescent Beach, and Semiamu Bay. With sea level rise, existing flood control protection will not work as well in the future. The map illustrates the extent of flooding that can be expected from a big storm today and in the future if no improvements or changes are made to the existing system. Ten shortlisted options have been developed for Surrey's coast. You will now see a one-minute summary for each option developed, starting with the options for Mud Bay, followed by Crescent Beach options, and then Semiamu Bay options. Mud Bay. Current conventions. As sea levels rise, Surrey continues to maintain existing flood control works to meet protection requirements. Present-day annual dike maintenance costs of about $1 million increase substantially over time. Significant investments in upgrading existing flood control measures are required. The BNSF railway embankment along Mud Bay is not a dike and cannot be raised, so a separate, parallel dike is built. Coastal dikes are raised over time by up to 3 meters and river dikes are raised by up to 1 meter. For every meter dikes are raised, an additional 8 meters of land is required for the base of the dikes, which requires purchasing private property on the landward side or building out into the foreshore on the ocean side. Going forward, the time the two sea dams remain open continues to decrease as a result of sea level rise, resulting in higher river levels and increased flooding of agricultural lands. Additional pumping capacity is unlikely to offset the increased flooding. The raising of dikes and other upgrades are implemented in phases over time. Ongoing costs are significant. This option is most familiar to stakeholders and no new landowners are impacted. Mud Bay Barrier All of the existing flood control works continue to be maintained, but coastal dikes do not need to be raised if a 4.5 km offshore barrier across Mud Bay is constructed to reduce the impacts of high tides and storm surges from entering the bay. The earth-filled barrier has riprap on both side slopes and is built at an average height of 10 meters above present sea level to allow for 50% settlement and 1 meter sea level rise by the year 2100. At a combined outlet channel for the Serpentine and Nicomechal rivers, the barrier has a gate structure that is closed during storm surge events. As sea levels continue to rise, the time the barrier and existing sea dams remain open is shortened, resulting in higher river levels and increased flooding of agricultural lands. The environmental impacts of the option are extremely high during construction and into the future. Ecologically critical mudflats and salt marshes in the bay are lost as land previously between the barrier and the existing shoreline is used for freshwater storage, providing storm water and irrigation improvement. Highway 99 Realignment This option sets flood protection back from the ocean by building a 2.5 km long dike along Highway 99. The dike protects other inland routes, infrastructure, and land uses, while residents along the coastal side of Highway 99 in Mud Bay area are relocated or otherwise assisted in adapting to coastal flooding. The two sea dams are rebuilt and aligned with the Highway 99 super dike. As sea levels continue to rise, the time the sea dams remain open is shortened, resulting in higher river levels and increased flooding on agricultural lands. 14.5 kilometers of dikes along the Serpentine and Nicomechal rivers downstream of the sea dams are no longer needed and not maintained or upgraded. All other flood control works upstream of the sea dams require upgrades over time, 
including raising and widening of river dikes and protection against erosion as the magnitude and frequency of floods increases. Some environmental benefits are realized on the coastal side of Highway 99, where former agricultural land is converted to coastal marsh and a new coastal multi-use trail is established to link Boundary Bay Park with the Nicomechal Greenway. Lands east of the dike are maintained for their current uses within the Agricultural Land Reserve. Managed Retreat This option involves a carefully planned and managed retreat from the coastal floodplain. As sea levels rise over time, dikes are gradually overtopped, and the city's investment in flood control is gradually reduced. Where feasible and practical, floodplain residents and stakeholders are supported to adapt, including the reorganization of agricultural activities and with adaptive building approaches. New land uses are introduced over time, including new recreation opportunities and creating new ecosystems and habitat for wildlife, fish, and migratory birds. Key infrastructure, including Highway 99 and King George Boulevard, remain functional but require raising and other extensive improvements. Other infrastructure, buildings, and pump stations are removed and recycled in a phased and organized manner. With less investment in large-scale flood control, more resources are available to help floodplain residents and stakeholders to adapt or relocate. While development over the past 140 years has significantly altered the land, this option would return much of the area to its original coastal floodplain wetland environment. Crescent Beach Expanded Edge This option proposes building the beach out in front of the existing shoreline to reduce the slope of the foreshore and, in turn, reduce wave run-up. By 2100, the dike would be on average 2.5 meters higher than today with oceanfront views severely impacted. The raised and expanded dike will provide protection against overtopping and erosion. However, this option is considered high risk because of the high likelihood of failure of the dikes and potential detrimental impacts from flooding. Furthermore, given the sandy ground, seepage issues will accelerate with sea level rise. To help manage some seepage issues, perforated piping will need to be added over time to pump groundwater into the ocean. In addition, all homes and roadways will need to be raised by about 1 meter by the year 2100. The option would be phased over time, however, continuing to adapt to higher sea levels beyond the year 2100 may be challenging from a seepage perspective. Barrier Island or Spit A kilometer long barrier island or spit that is 6 meters above sea level by 2100 is constructed offshore to reduce onshore wave action. The barrier island or spit needs to be located close to the shore to effectively reduce wave run-up, impacting views from the coastline. Existing onshore dikes need to be raised throughout Crescent Beach, as the barrier island alone is not enough to prevent future flooding. The southwest dikes would be raised by 2.3 meters, about 30 centimeters lower than required by the expanded edge option, and the northwest and northeast dikes will be raised by up to 3 meters. This option is considered very high risk because of the very high likelihood of failures of the dikes and potential detrimental impacts from flooding. The barrier island, or spit, does not address issues of seepage or groundwater flooding, and perforated piping will need to be added over time to pump groundwater into the ocean. In addition, all homes and roadways will need to be raised by about 1 meter by the year 2100. Continuing to adapt to higher sea levels beyond the year 2100 may be challenging from a seepage perspective. Mud Bay Barrier. A 4.5 kilometer offshore barrier across Mud Bay is constructed to reduce the impacts of high tides and storm surges from entering the bay. The earth-filled barrier is built at an average height of 10 meters above present sea level to allow the barrier to settle into the mud by half of its constructed height. The height of the structure will impact views from Crescent Beach. All of the existing dikes in Crescent Beach need to be maintained. However, existing dike raising would be significantly reduced. The environmental impacts of the option are extremely high during construction and into the future. Ecologically critical mudflats and salt marshes in the bay are lost, as land previously between the barrier and the existing shoreline is used for freshwater storage. This is the only option that responds to flood hazards beyond Crescent Beach and reduces dike upgrade requirements in Mud Bay and along the Nicomechal and Serpentine rivers. 
the option is associated with very high risk to the entire floodplain population. Even a moderate earthquake will likely cause damage to the barrier resulting in compromised flood control until costly repairs can be made. Managed Retreat over time, as sea levels continue to rise and flooding worsens, residents and businesses relocate from Crescent Beach and the area returns to its original natural state before European settlement in the 1900s. The option assumes that other areas are made available for residents, businesses, and institutions and the approximately 1,400 people who live and work in Crescent Beach. From a technical perspective, managed retreat is likely to offer the most viable, long-term solution in this high flood and earthquake hazard area. Semiamu Bay Semiamu Bay has two options to adapt to sea level rise. The first option is to raise roads and low-lying lands. In this option, Beach Road would be raised. The small section of 8th Avenue that is vulnerable to flooding would also be raised. Lands vulnerable to flooding in the northwest corner as well as southeast corner of the Semiamu Indian Reserve would be raised to meet flood construction levels. The second option assumes that the BNSF Railway is relocated inland. This option proposes both raising roads and low-lying lands, as well as building the beach out in front of the existing shoreline to reduce the slope of the foreshore and, in turn, reduce wave run-up. Using a green shores approach, traditional indigenous shoreline access would be restored and habitat values would be significantly improved. While the raising of 8th Avenue is within the jurisdiction of the city of Surrey, the majority of works are outside of Surrey's jurisdiction. Visit surrey.ca slash coastal to learn more and have your say on what options are chosen to prepare Surrey for sea level rise.